Australia, we are lucky enough to be able to drink water straight from our taps. And the fluoride in this water has been contributing to the decline in tooth decay for over 61 years. However, scientists and health professionals are now saying that this fluoride may actually be causing more harm than good. The poison is fluoride. It's there because government health bureaucrats and dentists tell us it's for our common good, for reducing tooth decay and at levels which won't harm you. What is fluoride and where does it come from? Fluoride is a compound containing the element fluorine combined with something else. So we put fluoride into the drinking water, ostensibly to reduce tooth decay. But it's a very unusual practice to use the public water supply to deliver medical treatment, human treatment. Because once you put it in the water supply, you can't control the dose can't control who gets it. It violates the individual's right to informed consent to medicine. And this is medicine that you're going to get for the rest of your life if, if they get their wishes. So it's a lousy practice. As a result of fluoridation, our children will be healthier and happier. There is no health hazard that justifies postponing water fluoridation. We don't use the pharmaceutical grade fluoride that we put into toothpaste and other dental products. Incredibly, the chemicals that we use are from the scrubbing systems of the phosphate fertilizer industry. I know people find that hard to believe that this is actually a hazardous waste. It contains all kinds of other substances, including arsenic, which is a known human carcinogen. So whatever else fluoride might do, by using these contaminated hazardous waste products, we are increasing the risk of cancer to every individual in our society. My major concern is the impact on the brain. Now to put this into context, the level of fluoride in mother's breast milk is incredibly low. 0 0.004 parts per million. And we fluoridate at about one part per million. So the bottle-fed baby is getting about 200 times more fluoride than nature intended. The concerns are, number one, the one they can't deny is dental fluorosis. Well, this would be considered a condition, the first picture was mild fluorosis. This mm -hmm. is more severe fluorosis. And so you could see that the edges, the incisal edges of the teeth are, are uh, decaying and defective and it really is a condition which causes a, not just a cosmetic defect but a defect to the hardness of the teeth and the health of the teeth. We now have 37 IQ studies done in China, mainly in China, but also in Iran, Mexico and India, which shows a, an association, fairly modest exposure to fluoride and lowered IQ. Because if you're going to do something as silly as exposing the whole population to a known toxic substance, you've got to be able to protect everyone. You've got to confidently. And right now, you would be expecting Western Australian authorities who continue to support this practice to be able to tell you that there is this body of evidence of studies on the brain which negate all the studies that have found harm. And it isn't just IQ. Over 40 animal studies which shows that fluoride damages the brain, 19 studies which shows that it interferes with the memory and learning ability of mice and rats, three fetal brain studies which finds that fluoride damages the fetal brain, then these IQ studies. They have no body of evidence to nullify this. Harvard researchers have found children who live in high fluoride areas have significantly lower IQs than those who live in low fluoride areas. Looking at the levels of artificial fluoridation internationally, it seems that Australia is one of the most heavily fluoridated countries in the world. Today, 98% of Europe and 90% of the United Kingdom are actually banning water fluoridation. Why do you think the government is still putting, like, insisting that fluoride is safe? I think it comes down to a very common human trait. We do not like to admit when we are wrong. And this is particularly true of government bureaucrats and bureaucrats in general. They don't like to say 
that a policy that they've championed for so long as being the best thing since sliced bread is actually a tremendous mistake. City Council yesterday voted overwhelmingly in favour of removing the chemical after 20 years of using it. Another Queensland Council's decided to remove fluoride from its drinking water. Fraser Coast councillors today voted overwhelmingly against continuing the practice. Despite the health concerns and the questionable effectiveness of putting fluoride into a public drinking water, the health department is still insisting that this is a safe and beneficial practice. Uh, fluoride has been reviewed many times in Australia and the National Health and Medical Research Council is the body that, that conducts those reviews. So uh, and we're hoping that we'll do another one because we think it should be well researched. Uh, but um, the Act of Parliament gives the power to direct uh, fluoridation to the Minister for Health and so it's really his decision. Dr Lugg's own committee in 2000, according to their minutes of their meeting, actually had a debate and they said in that debate the legislation from 1966 isn't fit for purpose with their exact words. And then the chairman of the committee, I'm not sure whether it was Dr Lugg at the time, said, we probably better not suggest this to the minister because it was quite controversial in 1966. In other words, it's brushed under the carpet. Now it's 14 years ago, and if the legislation wasn't fit for purpose 14 years ago, it certainly isn't fit for purpose now. Hazmat crews from all across our area responded to a chemical leak this afternoon in Rock Island. The chemical was so strong that it was burning through the concrete there. The chemical hydrofluoral sicilic acid is used to add fluoride to the plant's water. Uh, the treatment of the water and the, the amount of water uh, you know, being used by the public, there's no effect on that at all. People who want to opt out have got a choice of how they do it. They can put in a rainwater tank, they can buy bottled water, they, you know, special fluoride removing filters they can use. No one's forced to drink it. That's one of the most iniquitous things that proponents say, you can opt out. Can you really, when I go and have a coffee, when I have processed foods, or when I you know, go and have a glass of beer that's made in Australia, it's always got fluoride and you cannot opt out. They are only dealing with these grade B studies where they're not double blind, not randomized, uh, selected um, people to examine. So, very, very weak evidence. Well, to put it very simply, fluoride <coughs> is safe <coughs> at one part per minute. Most dentists and doctors were only taught one thing at dental school or medical school. And once they've left to graduate, they go into practice. They're so busy treating patients, they don't have much time to do their own research. Um, and so they take the word of their professional bodies and, and the government. And as I said, both of them are very reluctant to admit that they've made a mistake. The vast majority neither fluoridate their water, nor their salt, nor their milk. And yet, according to World Health Organization figures, their teeth are just as good, if not better, than the countries that do. This is Jacinta Dickens reporting for Undercurrent.